The OECD chapter in the latest Global Information and Technology Report focuses on China and its position in the global production, demand, and use of information and communication technologies. So if we look at Chinese exports of ICT goods to start with, uh, we see that there's been a remarkable surge in recent years. And I'd like to ask just how strong is the Made in China label and uh, which products does it specialize in? Yes, you're, you're right. If you look at the Chinese ICT's exports uh, from 2003 onwards, uh, they have been more than remarkable. I think they have been massive and exponential. So from a, a gross level um, of 30, 40 percentage points every year, uh, we've seen increases uh, from about 1.5 billion to 240 a billion U.S. dollars uh, in 2005. This is overtaking uh, the United States since 2004. And um, just as a point of comparison, in 2005, although the difference between the United States and China was rather uh, limited, uh, China is exporting 100 billion U.S. dollars worth of ICT exports more than the United States. Now, this is just one part of the story. Uh, the important thing is to see that it's not actually Chinese local firms uh, producing, owning the technology and exporting to the world, but it is foreign firms assembling um, Chinese, uh, assembling ICT products essentially in China. Um, so it's low cost assembly production things which are being done in China and then being re-exported often over Hong Kong to uh, main markets. So made in China, yes, but uh, by IBM, by Microsoft and, and by US companies sometimes. So how exactly has China then been able to carve out a market for itself in the face of international competition? You, you mentioned some big names. Um, what, what, what are the kinds of challenges it's, it's facing in order for, it to, for its own market to keep growing? Yes, exactly. There's two sides to the story again. Uh, on the one hand, um, China must be seen as a global production uh, platform, if you think. Uh, for um, global ICT firms. And the main competitive edge or factor here is labor costs, so low wage labor costs. And despite of the fact that those labor costs have been rising steadily, even in China, uh, there's still about one sixth of the population in agriculture, uh, or 40% of the total labor force in China is still in non productive activities. So we'll sti still see uh, productivity increases which are rapid at low wage rates, which will be attractive. Uh, to maintain China as a global production platform. Now, this is one side of the story. The other side is that Chinese firms have also developed, and they have not just looked and assembled for foreign firms, but uh, to give you a couple of examples, um, higher in the uh, field of consumer electronics and what goods, um, Huawei and telecommunications equipment, or Lenovo and PC market equipment, those were all Chinese brands which were unknown uh, to most of us. Uh, only two years ago, and now they have all in common a substantial share either of the global market um, or at least strong growth rates, including from sales abroad. So that's, that's quite remarkable. And if you take the example of Huawei, it already today in telecoms equipment has half the revenues uh, from big firms like Cisco and Alcatel, driving about 68 of their revenues, percentage points of their revenues, from global sales. So not only local, but global sales. Huawei is also remarkable of being among the top 20 uh, patenting, patenting companies in the world, according to recent uh, statistics. So uh, these are the two sides of the story. So on the one hand, you have uh, still low-wage labor costs, which attract foreign firms to assemble, but then also Chinese firms, which have uh, learned from, from the investments done by foreign firms, technology transfer, and which are quite present in world markets now. And uh, how is domestic demand uh, changing the ICT landscape in China? Domestic demand in China usually is not um, a big component in Chinese ICT or Chinese growth, for, so to say. But this is quite different on the in the ICT side because um, China is now um, the sixth uh, biggest ICT market already, um, just um, after uh, for, you know com countries like United States, Japan, etc. And this is catching up fast, so we expect it to be the third uh, biggest ICT market uh, in a few years to come. If you look at figures such as uh, the Internet users, for example, as well, there's uh, today 137 billion, uh, million sorry, Internet users in China, 
and that um, you know, with 90 million uh, broadband users, more to say, so uh, you see that the absolute figures uh, in China are quite massive. And from recent tr trips to China, um, I mean, everybody will see that PC banks are full of online uh, computer game playing, um, college kids in, in universities, um, college students are creating blogs, etc. So the presence of China in the, in the demand side it, you know, is very important uh, already today. Um, now, in terms of impact, this means two things. One, it's a huge market for um, Western ICT firms. And you see in their annual reports, for example, that the biggest gross components come from, from China often. But then on the other hand, the market is big enough also on uh, the Chinese market for Chinese ICT firms to um, use this market to try their products. And it's, it's, it's big enough not to rely on foreign exports from the start to grow and to nurture their technologies. So the, these are the two components. And the demand side also has impacts, of course, on the, on the policy uh, agenda, on the global policy agenda. A few years ago, the, um, you know, China was not necessarily involved in ICT policy setting standards, intellectual property rights. But now, the market is as big and you know, the supply side also as strong that um, China is at the table in, in these negotiations. So when the OECD, for example, in 2008, does a ministerial on the future of broadband, China will be an important player. And as the Chinese government encourages domestic firms to go global, how successful are they in becoming global players and um, what's your forecast for them in the future? Yes, it's right. The go out strategy of China, meaning uh, the encouragement of the Chinese government to Chinese firms to go abroad, is already a couple of years old. Uh, but the fact that it's so concentrated on high technology, ICT related fields, is extremely new. So this is, you know, you've seen that start only two years ago. If you think about the investment into China, it's, it's one of the biggest ICT investment markets, but the total investment is about 70 billion US dollars every year. And you see that now um, the exports and the foreign direct investment from China abroad is 7 billion. So that's 10% of what comes in goes out. It's quite a remarkable figure in no time. Um, Government has been encouraging this. It's also because the stock market is growing very strongly in China. Liquidity is there. And also, if you think about the foreign exchange reserve, it's about one trillion US dollars now. All this money can be used for Chinese firms to purchase um, firms abroad. And this has been you know, quite um, remarkable in the sense of Lenovo buying the PC brand of, of IBM, for example. But it has not always been um, you know, marked by success. It's a difficult, like for Western firms, integrating other firms is, is remarkably difficult, integrating them into, into your supply chain. So the couple of examples that we have of Chinese firms buying, Chinese ICT firms, are foreign ones, uh, is Lenovo, uh, IBM, Siemens, BenQ, uh, the example, and then the cooperation between TCL and Thomson. And all those corporations have uh, troubles on the way, troubles with organizing their supply chain, a management troubles often in you know, the cultural difficulties of integrating uh, these foreign firms. Uh, so uh, it's not as easy as just purchasing them um, similarly for, for Western firms, actually. But uh, these are players to be reckoned with, uh, reckoned with in, the, in the near future. So China is certainly on the up and growing. Absolutely so, yeah.